process with the students to make sure you understand the material. I didn't want to go into debt when I went to college. I've saved thousands of dollars. Campus is great. Everything is right here, so it's easy. I mean, it's a small campus, so they always have activities for us to do. I've never been part of a team like this before. You just come together on and off the court. That's what really pushes CM over the top of everybody else. Anybody that steps foot on this campus won't want to go anywhere else. It's a great place to go to get your start and to determine where you'd like to go in the future. I can easily transfer credits to any college of my choice. If you have a good foundation like Central Maine Community College gives you, you can really go anywhere with it. My whole experience here has just been building up my confidence. For me, this is my place. This is my home. It's one of the greatest decisions I ever made. When I walked through these doors, I was just blown away. This is insane. It just caught my attention immediately. This is the first place that I've seen like this decked out. It's pretty sweet. This is a grand opening for our eSports arena. We're talking 1,600 square feet of pure technology. Like, I'm shaking being here. It's so cool. There's nothing like it in Maine. We're ahead of the curve here. It's definitely a big market, something you can make a living on. I've always had an interest in eSports. We're treating it like an extension of our athletic program. And then in addition to that, we're starting an eSports management degree program. It's just a different community for me to be a part of. It really just helps me just be myself. It's just really fun. This will bring students together. That's what's happening, and that's what eSports is. To me, it's beautiful, and I want to live here. I practice me and him when we're matched up against each other. We just make each other better, and I love playing with that kid. He, he's the most, he's one of the most unselfish players. We with Noel, and Noel won that. Hank, into space. Blue it. Shoots. That's deflected and put toward goal. The flag stays down, and it's 1-0. Yeah, I mean, it was incredible. Uh, I spent two years here. Um, when I came in, uh, Matt Biot had just got the head coaching job, and, you know, he was uh, really trying to turn the program around, and it was awesome to be able to see that grow throughout that two years that, you know, he was able to lay that foundation on, and, um, you know, it was everything you could have asked for here. I mean, the school treats the players awesome, you know, and um, the facilities, just amazing, top notch, so. Um, you know, I loved my time here and, um, you know, recommend it to anyone, really. I mean, top-notch program, yep. Yeah, I'd say we all got along really great, um, really fast. Um, like, just from the first week that we all got here, I think uh, everybody was able to mesh well. And then the area, it got all the way through. Johnson was close. Now played in the middle. And a shot up high for a goal. It's Nonowitz. Just 36 seconds into this second half, Allison Nonowitz has doubled the lead for the Mustangs. 
Well, that's the start. Mustangs were looking no, all the for right there. In the world of the guys on the bench, you know, from people that just came out, people that may not be playing that much. I mean, when you when you got 12 guys out on the court, you need high fives and you make a simple play like that. It uh, it feels good, and it's a, it's a good team feel, not just individual feel. It just feels like home. It's a diverse place. I learned a lot here. It really is like that perfect stepping stone and TRIO even articulates that more so. TRIO is a government funded program that has tons of resources. They help you with real life problems. If you didn't know how to write a resume when coming here, TRIO will help you do that and they'll help you apply for scholarships. Time management. They helped me to find a mentor for my business classes. I took statistics over the summer, and if it wasn't for one of the tutors at Trail that helped me, I don't think I would have passed. There's a student services office. It says the Success Center. It's kind of like the hidden gem in the school. All the advisors are there. It's really any time, you can just pop right in, say hi, or you can make an appointment. I want to be a labor and delivery nurse to create my own business. That is my goal. I would love to start my own clothing store. My dream is to be a chiropractor. It's not easy to be in college, and I need someone to say, hey, you can do this. Once I got into the nursing program, I went straight to TRIO. I told Terry, I just got accepted, I'm crying, and she was there to celebrate with me. They push you to succeed. They understand me, support me, and encourage me to do better. Yeah, for me, TRIO is a family. I'm just very grateful for TRIO because their tutoring program really helped me out throughout my college journey. They have so many resources. You have your advisor, you have all that tutoring. It's free, anyone can apply. If you don't apply, you don't know what it has for you. They've helped me so much just being here. I mean, it's awesome. It's, it's unlike anywhere I've ever really played before. When you're this close, uh, when you're this close to the court, not a lot of college courts, especially, are like that. But uh, no, I mean, it's awesome when you get to turn around after you hit a three and you're close enough to give uh, the guys on the bench high fives or turn around and look at your buddies in the stands and give them high fives. So it's a good feeling when you hit one right in front of either one of those. When I go in, I just want to do whatever I can to help us as a team. The better that I work with everyone. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Central Maine Community College, Auburn, Maine, for YSCC basketball. Here we are in November. We're ready to go here as the Mustangs of Central Maine Community College welcome the Division Three. NCAA team from just up the road, about 45 miles, the University of Maine, Farmington. I'm Jim Toomey, along with our executive producer, Rob Munzing, Andrew Severson on the camera. And Rob, uh, time flies, doesn't it? All of a sudden, we're back here, and looking at the CM roster, it's sort of like Christmas, <laughs> in the sense of there's a lot of presents, and we're going to unwrap some of the new presence over the next few weeks. Well, it's going to be an exciting season for the Mustangs here. We saw them early uh, on against Lee Academy in, in almost a preseason scrimmage type of deal. Very impressive uh, performance that night against a good Lee team. And uh, certainly they come in against the Division Three uh, Beavers here tonight, and that's another great matchup and makes a lot of sense. They're both close by. You know, I think the U UMaine Farmington have a lot of respect for this CM program. Know they'll get a, get a good deal in here uh, coming down here. And and uh, we're certainly looking forward to it uh, tonight as uh, we roll out our, our second game of the season. There's really no off-season anymore, Jim. We just roll into things. We've already done a couple of hockey games. We've done one basketball game. We've got the soccer playoffs coming up this weekend. We've done volleyball. It all is just one whole continuum here, and we love our Mustangs down here at CM. So we welcome people around the state of Maine, around the country, and literally around the world 
Munzing Media Sports, the official streaming partner of Central Maine Community College Athletics. So we're going to take a break here and come back with some interviews as we welcome everybody again to the 23-24 basketball season on Munzing Media Sports. Have you heard about free college? It's free. It's free. It's free. Recent high school graduates from the classes of 2020, 21, 22, and 23 can attend CMCC for free. The free college scholarship pays two years of tuition and mandatory fees. No income or age limits. What are you waiting for? It's free. Leaving CM with no debt is going to set me up for my future. Visit cmcc.edu slash free for details. CWA provides our program exactly what they say, a chance for small colleges to compete. It's leveling the playing field for everybody. back down here floor side and uh, we've got uh, Cam Pollock uh, coming on here for a pregame interview. Cam, you've had a good preseason so far. We saw you guys against Lee Academy. Another good test tonight coming in against the Division Three UMaine Farmington team. This will be a good test for you guys. What are you looking at here so far? You know, we're just looking at seeing where we are as a team. You know, Lee Academy, we played dumb. We played pretty good, shot the ball well, rebounded well. Um, we did good, some good stuff, so now we're seeing what we can do at the next level. You know. Um, UMaine Farmington is a D3 school, so they're a level above us. So we're seeing we just want to compete and, you know, hopefully we come out with this dub. Well, last uh, game that we saw here, the Lee Academy game, uh, you guys played a lot of guys. After playing tonight, get the rotation, see who's playing well with whom, and try to get everybody some good floor time here tonight. Yeah, for sure. You know, we just want to see it's really early in the season, so we're seeing who, what the chemistry is with each and every individual, you know what I mean? And we're just trying to play as a team, win as a team, you know, everything as a team. So when you take a look at uh, what's going on here in the area, we see you wearing the Lewiston shirts. Yeah. Back up just a little bit so oh, you can fault. see that. Sure, and you, you see the little emblem. This has been the emblem that has been uh, out around the state. I mean, it was a trying time for everybody. And uh, t tell us a little bit about the sentiments on on the uh, amongst the basketball program here. Yeah, so I mean, obviously it's a it's a sad tragedy for it to happen over here, you know what I mean? But um, we was on lockdown for a couple days, we couldn't get in the gym, we couldn't do much stuff. So uh, pretty much it was a big bonding experience for our team, you know, just we all have to be together every day. And it's just sad for such a bad thing to happen in such a small town, you know what I mean? Especially we have kids from Lewiston on this team, we have family, friends, you know, everybody knows each other. And, that's, and it's a small community, so I think having that happen is just is, is very sad. And my heart and everybody here, go, all of our hearts go out to the families that were involved. And, that's what we're here to do is just play for them, play for those families, play for everybody that was involved. Thank you, Kim. Good sentiments right there. So, want to wish you very best of luck tonight and uh, during the course of the season. We'll take another break. We'll come back. Jim Perfect. Tumio, join so me. We'll have some more pregame thoughts after this. 
helping people is kind of ingrained into me. I am so glad that I chose to be here. It's a really great program. Primary Dallas in the heart. The instructors are super helpful. They really do set you up to be successful in the field. The new hospital simulation lab here at CMCC is a great addition. It's as close to replicating real life as you can get. We did an IV lab. With a mannequin, it's nice to get your toes wet before you jump into a clinical setting. Deep breath. CMCC is the best place to start nursing. It's challenging, but you are learning. We have a smaller size classroom, smaller ratio to instructors. It's affordable. It really provided me relief that I'm not going to accrue a lot of debt. I needed to set myself and my family up for success after. I'm going to come out of this able to actually practice as an RN in the real field. It's a wonderful opportunity. Welcome back to Central Maine Community College. Players are excited. Again, uh, the women we'll see of the Central Maine women in a couple of days here. And uh, the word family comes up. I know the, the relatives at home of the new players have probably heard family. They did an excellent job in the press conference. Yes, yeah. But you and I could give the testimony being here, what, five or six years? Yeah. It's true. It's true. It's not just a slogan. It's not just something on the back. Uh, you can tell the players, even the new ones, were sincere about it. But we got five or six years of experience. Yeah, seeing it. And what I like about both teams over the years, if a mistake is made, they're not pointing at a teammate. They're almost hitting their chest and say, maybe I made the bad pass, yeah. or don't worry about it. We got to do the next play. And that, that's big of, as a foundational thing. Absolutely, and uh, as we get into this season, uh, one of the things uh, that we love having on is the kids in the interviews, and you know, we just had Cam on, and you know, the kids grow up so fast. They, you know, uh, Cam last year, he was like a wide-eyed doe, wasn't he, really? You know, everything that was going on, and this year he's speaking for his team and being very uh, uh, eloquent uh, in his sentiments uh, here, what went through uh, everybody's mind here in the community here with the senseless tragedy a week ago. So I'm sure everybody's, uh, you know, really happy to have a, a little sense of normalcy kind of coming back here without forgetting the, the great tragedy that unfolded here. I know they're playing the battle uh, of the bridge here tonight, Edward Little Lewiston, and uh, you know, that's a game that will bring the communities uh, well together, and that should be really uh, a neat thing over, uh, I think it's played at the EL this year at the new field, maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't want to speak where the game is today, but uh, we'll have, uh, as you said, Friday night, we'll see the women for the first time. They've been practicing hard. They're on the road here today. Uh, so they've gone off uh, to play an away game. They'll be in Friday. And uh, it'll be a, a UMA game on Saturday that Jim will be here to cover, along with Andrew Munzing and a cameraman to be named later. We're, we're checking the waiver wire to try to find someone. If anybody out in TV land knows some kid wants to make 30 bucks, I'll pay him 30 bucks and run a camera for an hour and a half. Uh, we need a camera person. We're stretched out because we're doing the soccer tournament here. Uh, and uh, the rest of my family, who normally works with me, they're, they're on to, uh, you know, uh, cheering on their brother. Uh, and uh, son uh, Patrick Munzing, who's in the playoffs uh, up at Lawrence. So lots of things going on. You see a familiar name on Farmington's roster, Zach Mickle, who was talking before the game. Oh, yeah. Two excellent years at Southern Maine Community College. He was here at some big games, and the last two years he's been at Farmington. Yeah, and his brother before him, yeah. uh, Mickle, and played I know, at I know uh, Dylan Griffin, number 41, who played for Thornton Academy. We streamed a lot of games from Thornton. Um, He's a 6'7 junior, excellent career at TA. Well, if you saw our first game, you, you see that the Mustangs have some good height as well. Uh, you know, Josh Gentry at 6'7, Harry Bates at 6'8. They're going to be able to compete inside with that size uh, with anybody. Uh, and a few times they put the, the uh, the two guys in together to play, and uh, it really was uh, quite a dominance on the boards. As we prepare for tonight's contest, our Mustang community would like to observe a moment of silence in 
light of the recent tragedy in Lewiston that has deeply affected us all. It is time for reflection, compassion, and solidarity. In this moment, let our thoughts and prayers go out to the victims and their families as we stand together in support and in hope of a better tomorrow. Let us pause in remembrance of those who have been impacted. Thank you. We would now like to honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Kirk Hall on the campus of Central Maine Community College for tonight's men's basketball game between the, Uni the UMaine Farmington Beavers and your Central Maine Mustangs! Before we introduce the teams, we would like to recognize our sponsors, Sam's Italian Shop, Investment Executives, Central Maine Conditioning Clinic, Paychex, Northeast Event Design, Munzing Media, and the Quality Inn and Suites. We encourage you to patronize their establishments. Now first, the starting lineup for the visiting Beavers. From Bill Ricker, Mass, number 10, Zach Mickle. From Biddeford, Maine, number 22, Will Harriman. From Farmington, Connecticut, number 25, Jordan Anthony. From Portland, Maine, number 30, Simon Chadbourne. And from Saco, Maine, number 41, Dylan Griffith. The Beavers are coached by head coach Sam Leal, assistants Parker Honorado and Jim Bessie.
And now the starting lineup for your Mustangs! From Turner, Maine, number five, Wyatt Hathaway! From Norwalk, Connecticut, number 14, Jeremiah Simeon! From Auckland, New Zealand, number 21, Boston Caldwell! From Queensland, Australia, number 23, Jackson Birmingham! And from Port McKay, Australia, number 34, Harry Bates! Head coach for the Mustangs is Dave Gagne. He is assisted by Steve Carey, Corey Davis, Malik Farley, and Jared Rubin. So, a couple of players we saw years ago enjoy their career very much. And they're back once again, <laughs> Corey David and Malik Farley. On the bench helping out Coach Dave, that's great. I'll tell you, Malik is uh, quite impressive with his suit and tie combination down there. Looking slick. Couldn't Malik jump? Malik could jump and everybody else had hit the floor, he'd still be hanging in the yeah. air. So we're gonna get that uh, pre-game video from, uh, we'll get a copy of that from Dave so we can play for the fans at home as they played here at the venue. That's how we did it last right, year. We, looks like we don't have live stats for some reason, so we'll just try to keep track ourselves. The Mustangs in white control the tip. Again, hope you enjoyed this one on Munzing Media Sports with the ball, Birmingham. Out top, debates. They swing it over the far side. There's a three pointer. Caldwell, no good. Rebound by Will Harriman. Here comes Zach Mickle, now a senior at UMF. As we said, he played for Southern Maine Community College first two years. Dylan Griffin looking around. There's a shot by Chadbourne, no good. Simon Chadbourne played for USM last year. Up in the front court, directing a little traffic is Birmingham. And there's going to be a legal screen on Harry Bates. I, I saw that elbow come out, didn't you, Rob? Harry was lead blocking on that one. And uh, didn't fool the official Jeff Mertzel, who was also one of the premier football officials here in the state of Maine. Side out. Side out right here. Side out. Extra side out. Something happened on the... Uh, yeah, the shot clock. Shot clock. And then the, uh, the rest of the lights came up, so it's a lot brighter in here all of a sudden. <laughs> Mickle being watched closely by Birmingham. 25 is Jordan Anthony, out to Griffin. Chadbourne stopped. Griffin for three. Didn't draw Ryan, grabbed off the floor by Caldwell. I heard the press conference, Boston Caldwell says, I have a couple of mates this year with him. <laughs> Traveling on yeah. the Mustangs. <laughs> well, both teams a little ragged offensively here on the get-go. Again, Sam Leal, the coach of Farmington. He's a Farmington graduate, his third year at UMF. He assisted at Bates College, right across the river. Mickel in the paint. On the drive, Anthony, fall away, Anthony, no good. Rebound, Griffin up short. Rebound, Harry Bates. Going to use that word a lot this year, that phrase, rebound, Harry Bates. A near steal. Excellent anticipation by Jordan Anthony. And I think Coach Dave Gonya going to call a timeout with 18-24 remaining in the first half, and we're scoreless. So stay right here with it early on, and we welcome everybody back to 
Kirk Hall, all the fans that have watched us in the past. And, of course, Jim, we're going to get a lot of new fans, new families yes. in here this year. And as, as Jim is always fond of saying, uh, around the country, around the world, because truly uh, international roster here for the Mustangs again this year as the uh, pipeline that Dave has opened up to uh, down under is still feeding us uh, players here up in central Maine, and that's tremendous. Well, that was a cliche for me, so to speak, and yep. then I was proven right. <laughs> Times 10. Underneath, up and in, Harry Bates at 6'8", Port Macquarie, Australia. Yes. Simeon with a nice feed in underneath, easy lay-in for Bates. I'll tell you whose name came up at the press conference was Coach Steve. Yes, yeah, Steve's a great recruiter. Steve Carey was mentioned by a number of new players. And Mustangs thought they had a block. Their fans thought they had a block. Yeah, Jackson Birmingham, who can jump out of the building, came over from behind, get a little body as well as the ball. Going to be two shots at the line for Simon Chadbourne. He's from Portland. But again, I saw him last year playing for USM. And two for two for Chadbourne. Mustangs lit it up in the game against Lee Academy in the hundreds. I think it finished 107 or something like that. A lot of points. Birmingham still has it. Birmingham underneath, up and off, rebound. Simeon gets the roll. Bates on the initial drive and Jeremiah Simeon's in the book on the follow-up. Yeah, two impact plays by Simeon. The feed and the Bates to start with, and then the follow-up. Griffin out top to Mickle. Mickle goes around to Griffin's screen. High off the glass, Mickle. Griffin the rebound, up and in. <laughs> Dylan Griffin, offensive rebound and putback. Well, you saw a lot of Griffin, and he's not only big, he's got good feet, Jim. And somehow he escaped... So to speak, uh, he didn't play football at Thornton. I think Coach Kiesel was chasing him around the hallways. <laughs> and a foul, I think, on Farmington. I think it was Jordan Anthony. Yes, Farmington, Connecticut product. Yeah, Anthony got called on the second. They let the first bump and go with a loose ball. Second one impacted possession, called the foul. Hathaway out to Birmingham. Is screened by Bates. Birmingham goes around. A finger roll off glass and good. So Jackson Birmingham in the scorebook. 6 4 Mustangs. Mickle being watched by Birmingham. Griffin, one of the tallest players, is going to play perimeter a lot. Off glass, no good by Chadbourne. And then Farmington loses it on the sideline. Mickel on the line, Jim, over there. Not a lot of room in front of the bench, and he caught the ball a lot of bounds. So we're going to say hello to the U.K. Joshua Gentry, number 33, 6'7", freshman from London in the game. Yeah, Josh was great during the interview session. Uh, I encourage everybody to go watch. I learned a lot about the kids on that uh, press conference that we screened a couple of weeks ago. Caldwell for three. Does not get the roll. Rebound UMF, University of Maine, Farmington. They play in the North Atlantic Conference. They were 19 and 8 last year. They were runner up in the conference tournament. And they had to call a blocking foul on the Mustangs. Side out, side out, side out. I think that's second, second on him. No, just first. Okay. Cam Pollock ready to check in. Mickle stumbles, and they're going to call the foul on Jackson Birmingham. Well, that's two now on Birmingham. Two quick ones. Yeah, Almost think, identical uh, situations, Jim. Yeah, I think he lost his balance a little bit. Inbounding the play by the Mustangs bench with Will Harriman, the 6'5 junior for Bitterford. Bitterford 15 miles south of Portland. 
See, we always have a new audience, so I can use the same material, Rob. Yeah. I'll drive you crazy repeating That's stuff. That's okay. <laughs> I'll do the same to you. There's a three-pointer by Mickle. No good. Griffin with the rebound. Griffin, the floater, does not stay down. And there's the tap-in. Nicely done by Will Harriman. Harriman snuck in. Boston Caldwell. They rotated around Gentry, and now left of the foul line extended Pollock. Simeon dropped it, got it back. Hathaway. Pollock for three. Bang! Cam Pollock, the sophomore from Manchester, New Hampshire, Manchester Memorial High School, 9-6 Central Maine. High post to Griffin. Tries to get it to a cutting Mickle. Saved in the corner. And off glass and good by Will Harriman. A little accidental offense in one regard. Nine to eight. Mustangs. Caldwell looking around. Skips it near side. Nice catch by Pollock. On the drive, Gentry caught in the paint. Has to get rid of it. Out of the corner, Simeon no good. Rebound bounces around. Griffin got the rebound and threw it away. Yeah, threw it to the official. I think he thought it was a teammate. Let's take a look at Cam Pollock early on. Cam's been a facilitator for most of his career here, but one of the things we noted was he's taken his offense a little more this year, and you can see it right there. Bangs down that three ball. See a couple of subs in. Colin Wilson, number 12 in. He, he's from Connecticut, 6'4", sophomore listed. Caldwell changes hands. Caldwell shoots. Does not get it. Inside position, Mickle with the rebound. So Boston shot off a little bit here in the early going. We've seen him light it up, though. Farmington out of the corner, no good. That was missed by Jordan Anthony. UMF, a long three, front of the rim by Chadbourne. Rebound Mustangs. Here comes Pollock. Caldwell, the trailer, returns it to Pollock. Again, they're the two veteran players. Jeremiah Simeon was here last year as well. And we're going to say hi to all the alumni who may be listening, providing us with a lot of thrills over the years. So we wish them good luck in their careers or whatever they may be doing. Shot no good. Caldwell the fall away. Does not get it. And it's going to be a foul over the back on Colin Wilson. Wilson's a nice story. They held an open camp, Jim, for tryouts for the developmental team that Wilson came up to. And Coach Carey was watching the action back and forth. And uh, he ran down the out of the gym, down the hallway, into Dave Gagne's office and says, get in here. You've got to take a look at this kid. And <laughs> Wilson was jumping through the gym that day. And uh, very impressive tryout he had, and he made the varsity team. That's a great story. Brock Flag, 32 in for UMF. He's from Brewer, Maine. And another foul on Central Maine. Some of the students over there are in midseason form, refereeing. <laughs> They're helping. Ethan Forrester, 45 in the game for the Beavers. He's a junior from Colorado Springs. Colorado made his way all the way east. Six fouls already on the Mustangs. Chadbourne for three. Bang. Simon Chadbourne. Farmington has the lead, 11 to 9. Pollock brings it across. Still has it. Out top to Gentry. That's Ashanti Haywood, 24 in the game. He's from Yarmouth, Maine. Also, Rocco Chang is in the game, number 13. He's from Auckland, New Zealand. Again, you know I do my time zones. It's uh, Thursday morning over in uh, New Zealand and uh, Australia. And it's we know a lot of the fans get up and, and watch these games early in the morning. Of course, you can watch it immediately after it's over, right on the Central Maine Athletics Facebook page. It's always there, and all the games, any game we've done is there. London's like five or six hours ahead of us. Shot clock at five. Baseline shot, 
Bang! Kim Pollock from downtown. 12 to 11, Central Maine. Downtown out in the parking lot, Jim. Yeah. Forrester. Here's a drive by Brock Flagg. From downtown, bang! Zach Mickle was closer to the stands than he was the three-point line. Well, the offense heating up here a little bit as teams getting a little offensive rhythm, Jim. And that's not an exaggeration. That was fact, what I said. Well, back-to-back -back shots of Pollock one is, we'll show you that in a second. Here's a drive high off the glass, and it stays down for Rocco Chang. He went to Westlake Boys, uh, the same school as Boston Carwell, so uh, he is a true mate. Yeah, that's... Bang! Three-pointer the other way by Jason Reynolds, a freshman from Winslow, Maine. Indeed, Rob Munzing, they are heating up. Pollock in front of the Farmington bench, stops, shoots, got it! Pollock stopped on a dime and came up shooting. Zach Mickle being watched by Pollock. Pollock's three for three. Forrester, bounce pass. Chadbourne, back to Forrester for three. All backboard and foul underneath on the Beavers. Here's one we've been saving. This is the Pollock shot from the corner. The angle, he's out in the parking lot shooting that one. All net. Cam having a great shooting game. He's going to want to come on pregame every game. <laughs> Cam was our guest pregame. Spoke eloquently about the feelings of the student athletes down here with the recent events that have gone on. Patrick McKenney, 15 in for UMF, sophomore from Newcastle, Maine. He went to Mendomic Valley. That's Rebound off the miss. I couldn't get sort of screened. Who yeah, it was took Pollock. That? First miss of the game for him. Just about halfway through the first half, Farmington with a one point lead. In the paint, shut off was flag from the outside. Bang! Patrick McKenney, 20 to 16, Farmington, three points the other way. Bang! Rocco Chang from downtown. Farmington in the corner, there's a shot. Spins off, no good by Flag. Rocco Chang gets the rebound. Quickly in the front court, Colin Wilson backs in. Wilson stumbles. Loose ball picked up by Reynolds. Little contact we play on. And stolen away. Excellent job, Colin Wilson. Stolen the other way by McKenney. Either way, score the basket. Here's the Rocco Chang. Chang is contested right here, right in his face, and it lets it fly. That's Brock Flag. This is the Brewer Flags. Brock Flag, a 6'1 freshman. Gonna go for the old-fashioned three-point play. Uh, Andrew, I don't think I focused the camera. Uh, at some point, you're going to have to zoom in and do a focus and make sure it's looked a little soft to me. Andrew Severson, always doing a great job. He's Good. been loyal here for a few years, right? Oh, very reliable, Andrew. Yep. Always here. Four point Farmington lead, 9.20 remaining. And we're going to have a timeout. First game of the year at University of Maine Farmington 23, Central Maine 19 on Munzing Media Sports. Have you heard about free college? It's free. It's free. It's free. Recent high school graduates from the classes of 2020, 21, 22, and 23 can attend CMCC for free. The free college scholarship pays two years of tuition and mandatory fees. No income or age limits. What are you waiting for? It's free. Leaving CM with no debt is going to set me up for my future. Visit cmcc.edu slash free for details. All right, welcome back to Tremaine Community College. 9.20 remaining first half, this men's basketball opener. University of Maine, Farmington 23, Central Maine 19. 
Simeon back in the game. Caldwell for three. No good. Rebound underneath. Bates. A reset. Caldwell again misses. Rebound by Bates. And what are they going to call? Long reach of Harry Bates. Yeah, Bates bait, uh, back to back offensive. Luck's got it back to Caldwell. And Boston just needs to keep shooting. You know, he'll miss three in a row and then he'll hit 12 in a row. <laughs> he, he's a shooter and the shooter's got to shoot. We got two players from Lewiston in the game. Malik Foster, number four. And Eli Bigelow, number 32 for CM. Foster with it. Gives up his dribble, goes underneath. And going to the line will be Harry Bates. Yeah, nice feed underneath the base. Got hacked on the arm. Last time we uh, saw Eli Bigelow, he was having an outstanding Lobster Bowl game for the Lobster Bowl Classic, uh, representing Lewis and High in football. He was outstanding in that game. Right down the middle of that one, Harry Bates. Of course, no football down here at CM. They had it. I'll come down and coach. <laughs> Bates will try to bring the Mustangs within two. It rattles off the tip in. No good. Eli Bigelow climbed and just fell off the rim. Farmington leading by three with the basketball. The person of Zach Mickle who's returning. Chad Bourne back to Mickle in the corner to Griffin. Mickle drives. Mickle goes through traffic off the backboard, grabbed by Bates. Running the court is Caldwell, and he's going to go to the line. Boston Caldwell sort of shaking his head. He's trying to get in the scorebook, I believe. Yeah. Boy, when he gets hot, he gets hot, Boston Caldwell. His dad visited for a week or so yes, last year. Yeah, we had a great interview. And we're both speaking English. Neither one of us understood the other, however. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, I think his name was. Then we had Alex Mefectrich, of course, is very friendly over the years. His dad came. Yeah, oh, that's great. And I can't remember. Yeah, we had uh, Freddie Webb's uh, parents from Australia on one time. I think his dad came up. Had him on. Or maybe I, it was his mom. It, there might have been both of them. We, I found out the favorite breakfast cereal over there is Wheat Bits. We could have done maybe a commercial of Boston Caldwell. Maybe we could have got him sponsoring us. Yeah. One point, Farmington Lee, as Caldwell was good at the foul line. Just about eight minutes remaining, first half. Very competitive game here. Dylan Griffel, Griffin hands off. That's. Now, Chad Bourne fakes, being watched by Simeon. Baseline Griffin. Griffin tries to power it in. Four in the shot clock. Skip to the corner for three. Bang! Just as the horn went off, three-pointer for Jordan Anthony. He's from Farmington, Farmington, Connecticut. 26-22, UMF. Simeon gives up the dribble. They try to go inside the Bates. I think Griffin knocked it away, picked up by a teammate. Chad Bourne, Mickle over by the CM students. Chad Bourne from downtown. No good. Rebound UMF. Got loose. Nice hustle, Simeon, and picked up by Bates. Here come the Mustangs. Caldwell drives, taken away by Griffin. Outlet pass to Chad Bourne. Foster gets back on defense. Chadboard's going to shoot off the rim. Rebound Bates. Bates got a few boards, doesn't he, Rob? He does. We don't have the live stats up. I'm, he's got probably three offensive boards, and he's probably up about six or seven boards. He's usually going to be in double digits on boards. Caldwell for three. They're going to say no. There's going to be a foul. We'll go back, take a look at that shot clock going down, Jim. Anthony from the corner knew exactly what the shot clock was. You get a great look at it. Ball's in just as the clock expires. That's great execution by the Beavers here to get a good shot off, quality shot at the shot clock. Fouls on Eli Bigelow. And something going on underneath or is the shot clock? Shot clock. Shot clock. Yeah, the shot clock sometimes is tricky. 
Remember when they used to have to throw basketballs at it to make it work? <laughs> Back in for Central Maine Colin Wilson, number 12. Wilson out of Norfolk, Connecticut. Yeah, that was a great story that uh, Coach Carey told me about. <laughs> Wilson showing up for the developmental league trial. And coach and you got to come see this kid, Dave. <laughs> Underneath, up and in for Simon Chadbourne, the assist to Dylan Griffin. Back to back, really good passes by Griffin. Boy, when you big see the floor and can pass like this, it just creates such great opportunities. That is true. Because you really don't see any bigs with back to the basket anymore. That's long gone. Central Maine passing it around halfway through the shot clock. Hathaway out top. Nice catch, Caldwell. Caldwell fires. No good. Rebound went to Anthony. Here I, comes Mickle. I think the Mustangs will have an advantage against a lot of team on the boards, but not tonight. Right. Mickle in the air tries to create. It bounces around. Saved by the Beavers. Griffin from outside. No good. Rebound, Colin Wilson. And off the hands of Caldwell. Early season, Mustangs and, and both the Beavers, too. They're, they're trying to establish players' roles. Who's going to do that? Uh, you know, who's going to be the look-to guy on offense? Right now, the Mustangs can't get anybody hot uh, other than Pollock, who's three out of four. Griffin hands off. Mickle for three. Side of the rim. Rebound. No good. Excellent position by Will Harriman, but couldn't get it to go. Jackson Birmingham looks over to the coaching staff. Gentry on the pass, up and in. Boston Caldwell. Maybe that will get Caldwell relaxed a little bit. Gentry with the beautiful feed. Here it is, Jim. Take a look at a beautiful play here. And Caldwell slashing hard to the hoop. Harmed. Gets the finish. And we're back for the free throw. Caldwell completes the old-fashioned, as we say, three-point play. Cuts yeah. the lead to three. I'm in mid-season form. Got the replay in. Came right back yeah. for the free throw, Jim. Jesus. And a whistle. Something going on in the paint. Well, fouls have evened up a little bit. Remember, it was a 6-1 uh, at one time. Mustangs had six to one for the Beavers. Fouls on Hathaway at the line, number 40, Jason Reynolds, 6'4", freshman from Winslow, Maine, across the river from Waterville. Wyatt's still looking, I believe, for his first points as well tonight. I tried to hand score this, and I, I can't keep track. So we'll try to get a stat sheet maybe at the half. Yeah, they'll probably have that for us. Rebound off the miss. Colin Wilson with the board. Tried to see a player underneath, but we're out of bounds. Yeah, Mustangs will force the issue this year. You can see it. They want to run, and sometimes that's going to lead to, you know, things going to skew. And, but you take those uh, opportunities when you get them. There's a drive. It doesn't stay down for Ethan Forrester. But the freshman from Colorado Springs will shoot two. Might have some fans in the Rocky Mountains uh, watching. Colorado Springs, isn't that the home of the U.S. Air Force Academy? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Colorado Springs. Right down the middle of that one. Yeah, just a single game tonight. We get into league play. We'll have the women's men's double header nights. One out of two. And we love those su Southern Maine matchups, the University of Maine Augusta matchups. 
25-20, Mustangs trailing by five. 30-25, Farmington. Caldwell skips it to go back outside Hathaway. Bang! Wyatt Hathaway, the junior from Turner, Maine, just about 12 miles up the road. Up the road a piece. The extra pass by Pollock. Mickle underneath, spins, and a foul, I think. I think he used an off the off arm, I think. So watch the extra pass right here. Pollock, look at the basket. He's been hot, gets it to Hathaway. He knows he wants to get Wyatt heated up, and there you go. Good unselfish play by Cam Pollock. Checking in for the first time for UMF, number 24, Braden St. Pierre. Six-foot freshman from Reedfield, Maine, Marana Cook High School product. Let's check the lineup for the Mustangs. Pollock, Bates, Simeon, Caldwell, and Hathaway. Thrown away by CM. Walking it up is Mickle. Watching very closely, Cam Pollock. There's a three-pointer, UMF. It's no good, missed by Reynolds. There's Pollock. Slowing it down, looking things over. Way out top to Caldwell, right by the Mustangs logo. Pollock, bounce pass, baseline to Simeon. Simeon backing in, backing in, fakes, goes up and scores it! Jeremiah Simeon, a very methodic but successful move. Yeah, Jeremiah playing with a great deal of confidence this year. That was noted, the kids even noted how confident he was in his game this year. Three-pointer, Chadbourne, no good. And Pollock lets it go out of bounds. We're tied at 30 with three minutes to go. Here's Simeon, good old-fashioned one-on-one. It's like they're the only two in the gymnasium, Jim. For Farmington, number 20, Mason DeJardins, freshman from Jackman, Maine, Forest Hills High School. One of the smallest enrollments at the state, but they have shooters, they have some Class D championships. Yeah. So hello, everybody up there in uh, Jackman, Moose River area. Talk about the whole town going to the tournament. Look at Pollock, the fadeaway, does not get, oh! Carwell tried to catch a jam in the same motion. Mickle, score the basket. A creative move for Zach Mickle. Forest Hills High School is one of those schools in Maine that you can play eighth graders in, the high, in high school if your enrollment is under, I think, 40 at the secondary level. Here's Mickle through traffic, knows he's going to get hit, goes through it, and still finishes it. This is the foul shot. Nice rebound. Jason Reynolds reset for the Beavers. Deflected pass outside. Three-pointer no good by St. Pierre. Here come the Mustangs trailing by two. Hathaway bounce pass all the way underneath. Around the rim and in for Harry Bates. Yeah. Bates on the block. I think we're going to say that a few times this year. Hathaway found him. Harry powered home. We're tied at 32, just went under two minutes to go in this first half. Shot outside by Reynolds, rattles off, rebound Caldwell. Boston Caldwell over midcourt, waiting for his teammates to catch up. Cam Pollock returns it to Caldwell. Bates sets the screen, they go out to Simeon instead. Bates turns, shoots, gets it! A quick release by Harry Bates. CM by two. Mickle hands off. Mason DeJardins gave it up to Forrester. They look underneath. They're caught down there. All kinds of fakes and give credit to Jason Reynolds because he was really in a fix down there, Rob. And he just kept playing and playing and finally drew the foul. Well, here's the inside move by Bates. Watch as Jim said. Jim, you hit it right. You didn't need a replay to say watch the catch and release. It was perfect. 
All right, for CM in the game of the first time, number 30, Zach Poison. 5'11 freshman from Farmington, Maine, Mount Blue High School. Yeah, I saw Zach play quite a few times uh, against the Gardner Tigers, really good player. Good to have him back down here to see him play for the Mustangs. Jason Reynolds, good job at the foul line. We're tied at 34 with one minute remaining first half. Hasn't been pure all the time, but is very uh, entertaining and everybody's contesting every play. Bates shut off. Here comes Pollock out of the corner, a floater. No good, rebound Griffin. I'll tell you, if Griffin grabs a rebound, he's not gonna lose it. And traveling before, Desjardins traveled before he took the shot. Running into the game quickly, 32 for Farmington to Brock Flag. And the uh, UMF kids are doing a great job of coming all the way to the center. Oh. <laughs> haven't they, Jim? We haven't had one instance stopping in front of us. I think last year was a little better than the previous year. Two years ago, it was unbelievable, folks. They kept reporting to us to check in. Any visiting team. Look at Caldwell creating. I think you say to Caldwell, do that again, and he might say, I'm not sure exactly what I did. But the result was good, 36-34. The shot clock is off, game clock at 12. Mickle being watched closely by Pollock. Mickle for three, bang! And the clock's gonna run out here. And that will do it for the first half. Zach Mickle hit a three with about four seconds to go. They put that point up, did they? Not sure if the scoreboard has changed. No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It says 34. Yeah, our, yeah. our scoreboard just didn't update, so there it goes. Uh, 36, there it goes. Is it 37 30, Well, they're still working on it. They're gonna, officials are going to figure it out. All right, we'll come back with a correct score and some other things going on. Very competitive first half, very entertaining. So we'll take a break. We'll be back here 10 minutes. UMF with a sh small lead as we go into halftime over Central Maine on Munzing Media Sports. Have you heard about free college? It's free. It's free. It's free. Recent high school graduates from the classes of 2020, 21, 22, and 23 can attend CMCC for free. The free college scholarship pays two years of tuition and mandatory fees. No income or age limits. What are you waiting for? It's free. Leaving CM with no debt is gonna set me up for my future. Visit cmcc.edu slash free for details. USCAA provides our program exactly what they say, a chance for small colleges to peak. It's not the playing field for everybody.
Hutchinson Family Sports Foundation is proud to support Munson Media's production of live streaming high school sports. We recognize the hard work and dedication of Maine's high school student athletes, and we applaud Munson Media's pioneering live streaming efforts. The Hutchinson Family Sports Foundation. Coaches know you can't win a game without proper planning and execution. Let Gosline Retirement Planning coach you into a confident retirement. Here at Gosline Retirement, we provide that proper planning and help you utilize a step-by-step approach on all facets of your retirement planning. We provide guidance on income planning, wealth management, understanding taxation, Medicare and long-term care, and legacy and estate planning. We pride ourselves on working hard for those who have worked hard their entire lives. So, schedule your appointment today and let the team at Gosline Retirement Planning put together a retirement game plan for you. Helping people is kind of ingrained into me. I am so glad that I chose to be here. It's a really great program. Primary in the, heart, so the instructors are super helpful. They really do set you up to be successful in the field. The new hospital simulation lab here at CMCC is a great addition. It's as close to replicating real life as you can get. We did an IV lab. With a mannequin, it's nice to get your toes wet before you jump into a clinical setting. Deep breath. CMCC is the best place to start nursing. It's challenging, but you are learning. We have a smaller size classroom, smaller ratio to instructors. It's affordable. It really provided me relief that I'm not going to accrue a lot of debt. I needed to set myself and my family up for success after. I'm going to come out of this able to actually practice as an RN in the real field. It's a wonderful opportunity. The CWA provides our program exactly what they say, a chance for small colleges to compete. It's leveling the playing field for everybody. so much and it's very beneficial to the criminal justice system. I was always one of those kids that watched forensic files. That was something I loved. Just a science person all around, I always have been. The instructors are some of the top forensic experts in Maine. They really know what they're talking about. They've been there, done that. CMCC is very lucky to have people like this. I'm an intro to criminal justice and criminal law report writing. It's a lot of the baseline of things I have to be knowledgeable about. I want to do crime scene photography. The forensic science program is preparing me to start thinking like what's important here, what do I need to look for like right off the bat. You never know what you're going to find. Have you heard about free college? It's free. It's free. It's free. Recent high school graduates from the classes of 2020, 21, 22, and 23 can attend CMCC for free. The free college scholarship pays two years of tuition and mandatory fees. No income or age limits. 
What are you waiting for? It's free. Leaving CM with no debt is going to set me up for my future. Visit cmcc.edu slash free for details. The USC LA provides our program exactly what they say, a chance for small colleges to compete. It's leveling the playing field for everybody. provides our program exactly what they say, a chance for small colleges to compete. It's leveling the playing field for everybody. Back here at Central Maine Community College, Jim Toomey along with Rob Munzing, Andrew Severson on the camera. First game of the year at the half in this men's matchup, the University of Maine Farmington 37, Central Maine 36. Very competitive. Well, I think both teams are tickled to, to death to have this matchup. One midweek, very little travel coming down from Farmington down here. They're getting good competitiveness, playing a lot of kids, seeing who can do what, how they play with each other, all kinds of good things coming out of this. And, you know, the, the win-loss aspect of this game this early, you know, it's is not going to be anything you hang in your hat on or anything else like that. It's, it's developmental, getting yourself better. Uh, you practice, you practice hard, but you're going against the same guys all the time in practice. Good to see another, uh, you know, another big guy, you know, if, if you're the bigs on either team or, you know, having him defend a quick guard because you know your teammates, you know what they like to do. You, you play an opponent early on in the season, that's good, and, and you have to defend some stuff. I think one of the things we're going to see out of the Mustangs this year, Jim, and we've already mentioned it, is they want to force the issue. Uh, you know, pedestrian last year, they were trying to get the ball down in underneath and playing a slow down type game a little bit, uh, taking a lot of time in the half court. But, but Dave wants to go, go, go this year. If he can, he's got the guys to do it, and we're seeing it a little bit. And I think as the turnovers smooth out a little bit, you're going to see that uh, paint itself off here uh, as, the t as the Mustangs go on the offensive attack. Again, Farmington had a very good uh, year last year, 19 and 8. Teron Moss, one of their all-time leading scorers, is playing pro over in Ireland now. Boy, wasn't he the deal, huh? What a great play. He was in high school and stayed here in the state and just excelled at uh, UMF. Uh, as you said early on, Jim, some of the uh, uh, alums' wives, we, we see uh, DeMarco McKissick watching. Oh, uh, DeMarco. Yeah. Rob Munzing again. Uh, 
What would you say? Had the body of a weightlifter, but the feet of a ballet dancer. Yes, exactly right. I uh, wanted to have a T-shirt made with that, but yeah. I didn't. Uh, Mar uh, Marco, a great personality as well, and he's just joined the uh, the uh, broadcast. He's got two files now, Jim. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> coming in, coming in hot. <laughs> he's from Laconia, New Hampshire, as I recall. Every game we talk, I talk to Marco, and the kid go out. Be calm, be calm, be calm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, bang, 30 seconds, he get a foul. <laughs> but he, he just so aggressive and wanted to help the team so much. But he developed a very soft shot oh, over boy, his two sure years. Did. So UMF, head coach Sam Leal, a Farmington graduate in his third year, assisted by Parker Ornerato and veteran coach Jim Bessie, coached 34 years oh. at Mount Blue in Farmington. Nobody put on a show on the bench like Jim Bessie. I'm telling you, Cope be flying. Yeah. He'd be tying guys to the bench, wouldn't put him back in. He'd take his tie off time to the bench. There's a steal. Mickle goes back to flex it. Simeon caught underneath, high off the glass, defies gravity, rebound UMF. Dave Gagne, head coach of the Mustangs, assisted by Jared Rubin and their number one recruit is Steve Carey. And on the bench tonight, former players Corey David and Malik Farley. Dylan Griffin for three, no good. Rebound bounces around. Farmington gets it. Chad Bourne. And somebody shot it. I couldn't see because Coach Leo was setting the screen for me. <laughs> Boston Carwell out top to Simeon. The shot fake by Birmingham, and now something going on. What is it? Underneath. A holding foul. Yeah, away from the ball. I think they got Mickle on a hold off the ball. <laughs> Hathaway to trigger it in. Finally gets it out to Birmingham. Caldwell on a drive, comes out the other side. Caldwell got it back for three. Rattles off, rebound bounces around. Mickle has it. Mickle looks around. Griffin, top of the arc. Griffin bulls his way in, came up short. Rebound Bates. In the corner, Caldwell for three again. That one overshot. Rebound Mickle. Those are good shots for Boston. Got to keep heaving them up. Those are his shots. Ball got deflected in the back court. Three pointer. Beavers, no good. That was missed by Harriman, and now a foul underneath. Dylan Griffin, Griffin having a chuckle with Jackson Birmingham. Yeah, we're going to show the folks at home why. Griffin going to shoot two. Six seven junior from Saco, Maine. Sometimes it just looks easy to help an opponent up yeah. right here, Jim. Look at this. Played for the Thornton Academy Golden Trojans. <laughs> that was a funny moment. <laughs> you want to call AC towing on that one. <laughs> one out of two at the line for Griffin. Four point UMF lead. The University of Maine at Farmington actually founded one year earlier then the flagship campus in Orno. There's a steal by Mickle. Nice anticipation by the senior from Belrica, Mass. Get caught underneath. Excellent job by Simeon holding his ground on he, the baseline. He just stayed back, didn't commit the contact, and Mickle a little out of control there, lost it. But. Rocco Chang in the game for the Mustangs. Yeah, Chang came in in the first half, hit a couple of baskets. I think he's two for two, the only two shots he's taken. Chang to Birmingham. 
Bounce pass underneath. Bates looks around. Bates is trapped down there. And he fights his way clear and travels. Excellent interior defense by the Beavers. Chadbourne in front of his own bench. Mick Mickle skips it over to Griffin for three. Bang! Dylan Griffin, deep left corner. 43-36, Farmington. Hathaway for three, no good. Rebound, Griffin. Keep going, let's go! Mickle. Griffin for three from over here, bang! The soft touch of Dylan Griffin. His teammates get excited, the whole bench is coming out. 46-36, timeout, Mustangs. Yeah, Griffin doing it on both ends. The underneath defense caused the travel on Bates, came down, hit a three. They came back down after a good defensive hold and Lo and behold, there's the big man out front. You can see him directing traffic there. Just stays out there on the three-point line, says, give me the biscuit. I'm gonna put some gravy on it. Hits the three ball. I think the Mustangs have two or three players not dressed from what I can see, right? They're in warm-ups down there. Yeah, so. a couple of guys were not dressed tonight. Okay, don't. we haven't seen Kenray Imadiro. He's yeah, a sophomore Ken, from Manchester, New Hampshire. Yeah, Ken, Kenray was one of the kids I saw walk by in street clothes. Uh, Logan Myers we haven't seen, right? Right. 6'6 six, six freshman from Port Macquarie, Australia. Uh, we haven't seen Jaden McAllister from the Lone Star State, right? Number 20. 6'5 freshman. Uh, Shante Haywood, I think we saw briefly. He's from Yarmouth, Maine. Zach Poison, we saw briefly. We have not seen Sawyer Hathaway, the freshman of, from Turner, brother of Wyatt. That's quite an athletic family, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I wonder how many games like mom has gone to over the years between oh. her husband coaching yeah. and uh, the children playing and at a high level. Michelle is uh, number one fan of all the Hathaways. All right, let's see any adjustments made. Birmingham being watched by Harriman. Birmingham stops, shoots, hits the back rim. Rebound bounces around. I'll tell you, Farmington doing a great job on the boards. Particularly in the second half, yes. they're on the boards. Difference, uh, difference in the second half. We had a one-point game at the half. That last rebound was by Chadbourne. One more time, Griffin. No, a little too long. I thought that was gonna bank in, he was so hot. Here's the other way, coast to coast. And Griffin picks up. They're getting a buddy system out there. Jackson Birmingham and Dylan Griffin. Well, I can tell you, Birmingham came off the floor a lot quicker than Dylan did, that's for sure. <laughs> did it a few minutes ago. That one doesn't stay down. Back in for the Beavers, number 15, Patrick McKinney, the 5 9 sophomore from Newcastle. But he went to Madomic Valley. There's a number of towns in that uh, Whitefield, Damascotta area that they can pick the high school. The town right. will pay. So yeah. they go to Lincoln Academy, Coney, Gardner. You might have gotten some students. There's another steal. Yeah, we've, we've had kids from Whitefield. Yeah. All the way. And let's see. Maybe a foul. Very aggressive move by Jackson Birmingham. You mentioned Madomic Valley, always a good basketball school. Nick DePatsy, veteran coach, has had success, a lot of success the last uh, number of years. Had his kids playing for him, the DePatsy yep. family, much like the Hathaways. Three-pointer, bang! Jackson, Birmingham. People in Queensland like that one. Around noontime over there on Thursday. Will Harriman looking things over, skips it to the far side. McKenney back to Griffin. McKenney got it back. 
Underneath, up and in. Will Harriman on a great pass by Dylan Griffin. 48-40, Farmington. Josh Gentry gonna send it back out to Birmingham. Birmingham bounce pass across the lane, deflected, stolen away by Farmington. There's Simon Chadbourne. McKenney from downtown, back rim. Rebound, climbing the ladder, Jackson Birmingham. He can go up. He's skied. Birmingham, here's a three-pointer, no. We thought we were gonna see it. Hathaway to Gentry for the big slam! That message went all the way back to London. What a jam by Josh Gentry at 6'7". 1444 to go, second half. University of Maine found at 48. Central Maine, 42 on Munzing Media Sports. Yeah, we're gonna see the replay here. Hathaway gets it outside. Takes it to the hoop, splits the defenders. Nice little dish inside to Gentry and Josh up with the jam. A Gentry jam. Farmington went with the quick timeout. Coach Hill, I think, thinking, hey, we're gonna, we're not gonna let that be a momentum swing here in this one. Take the timeout, get everything squared away. You know, Farmington's played good complementary defense in underneath tonight, Jim. They really yeah. get back on the passing angles and things of that sort. We've seen them do that very, very well. And we got we got a top-notch officiating crew in here tonight. That's you know letting the kids play, keeping it under control. It's you know the not a, not any other basketball games going on. So we we, we get the uh, we got the top notches in here tonight. Three-pointer, Chadbourne, bang. Well, that's a good thing coming out of the timeout. Call well the other way. Leaves it to Birmingham. Birmingham directs a little traffic. The screen set by Wilson. Wilson got it back and lays it up and in. Pretty dish. They go inside. Peeking over his shoulder is Reynolds. Chadbourne fakes. And we have contact, and we have a player control foul. Yeah, Rocco Chang stepped in, held his ground. I tell you, this, this is good for both teams. And I say, and this is, it's not all pure, but every play is challenged. Right. It's very intense. Very good for early season. Yes, yes. Type, of, type of game, uh, you know, both teams wanted. I said that earlier, and a lot of kids playing. There's a block down there. Mustangs get it back. Little action underneath. Working hard underneath Jordan Anthony. And now let's see. Out of bounds off the Mustang. No, a foul. Caldwell going to pick up the foul. His first. Maybe not right up on the board, Jim. Yeah. Chadbourne takes the three, does not get it. Rebound, Birmingham. Almost found Wilson, hustled oh, back, getting careful. in the passing lane. Excellent effort, Jason Reynolds. Jason, gotta be careful. For UMF, Cole Banks coming in, number 33. Six-foot sophomore from the Green Mountain State, Chelsea, Vermont, went to St. Johnsbury Academy. Yeah, Chelsea's probably one of those names that is every, every state probably has a Chelsea. It is a little hook or pass. It's hard to tell what it was, but Reynolds ends up with it. The floating shot does not stay down for Anthony. Beavers get it back. There's a three, no good by Reynolds, and a foul on Farmington. Harry Bates ready to check in. 
Gentry comes out. To go 6-7 to 6-8 on that substitution. Ethan Forrester will check in at the next whistle for UMF. Caldwell spins, being watched closely. Wilson looks underneath, has to go back out to Caldwell right by the student section. Caldwell forces his way through, and the foul's on Caldwell, I think. Forrester is in the game, the junior from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Went to the Lewis Palmer School out there. Cole Banks brings it up. It goes outside to Chadbourne. Foul on Caldwell, I think. Wilson, I think, Jim. Was it? Okay, yeah. One, two, not two, one. You are right. You're a midseason four. You must have the eyes crossed, Jim. You went two, <laughs> one, said one, two. <laughs> the drive up and in, nicely done for Brock Flag. A freshman from Brewer, Maine, right across the river from Bangor. Yeah, Brewer had that great team that Brock was on. Wilson, a scoop shot, no good. Rebound tracked down. Out of the corner, Pollock, no good. Almost got his own rebound, but the Beavers got there first. Out of the corner for three. Bang! Simon Chadbourne, again, played for University of Southern Maine last year. He's a pure shooter, isn't he, Jim? Chadbourne. He gets looks, a shot off quickly. He looks, there's a drive coming up short. Was Birmingham, who comes back out. Caldwell to Birmingham. Baseline drive, Birmingham, and he gets two. So Jackson Birmingham did not give up, and he scored in that possession. Here comes Farmington leading by 10, nearing the 11 minute mark remaining. There's a steal. Pollock being chased. Pollock caught underneath. Wilson follows it. No good. And now a foul on Wilson, I believe, of CM. Going to be a timeout on the court. 10.56 to go in the second half. University of Maine Farmington 56, Central Maine Community College 46 on Munzing Media Sports. Yeah, we just looked at the Birmingham finish. You had mentioned how we never gave up on the play and stayed with it. 10 point lead here for the Beavers. One point game at the half. Hey, we've got more action coming up this week. Let you know on the graphic here, should pop up on your screen. Uh, nope, that's not it. <laughs> you know what I did? I did, I went to do that graphic, Jim. I didn't finish it. We'll just tell folks Friday night, we'll be back here for league action. For the Mustangs, it'll be the women's. They've got an exciting team this year. Almost a completely revamped roster. Just a few kids come back. Chantel Willette, one of them. Uh, Maura Lopez, one of them, and uh, it's going to be an exciting year as uh, Coach Morong has uh, brought in an exciting uh, team again this year, Jim. It's going to be a great season uh, for both the schools. There's always a few surprises, and a lot of times it's for educational reasons. You think somebody's coming back for a second year, and they don't. Sometimes uh, players are part of a uh, senior day. And then, right. but they're back. Yeah, Destiny Mora Lopez. I'm going to check with her yeah. and say, "Yeah, wait a minute, didn't I give you a graduation <laughs> present? Where is it? You're back. Oh, something. Yeah. I'll just kid her." Uh, they come back for another two years of different yeah. major. Sometimes is what they do, expand their educational horizons. And we know uh, that'll be a seven o'clock tip-off on Friday right. night. In that, uh, that's against uh, Albany Bryant Stratton, and then the UMA will play them the next day at uh, one o'clock. So, double. Double header YSCC opponents for them. High post to Griffin. Nickel in the lane, back outside. Chadbourne fakes the three.
Chad Bourne takes a two, does not get it. Nice rebound, Colin Wilson. Little contact in there, we play on. Birmingham. Bounce pass underneath. Bates feels contact and lays it in. Dylan Griffin hit the deck. Coach, Coach Conde likes that. Uh, Griffin. Harry not backing off the two bigs, banging it inside. I never thought anybody could knock Griffin down. <laughs> Halfway through the second half, 56-48, University of Maine Farmington. Of course, they always have to go through their conference tournament. It's Hudson University of yeah. Bangor. Those are great matchups. May Maritime, I believe, also in that knack. And there's some Vermont schools. Uh, they changed some of the names of yeah. them. They're all now like Northern Vermont, yeah, and they give the, the yeah. and, and some others. Mickle misses on the drive, knocked out of bounds. It's going to stay there, I think. Thomas College in the knack. And Thomas is, uh, they're kind of in rebuilding mode. Uh, for their programs, won't take them long to get those programs back up on fire. Colin Wilson comes out. A lot of effort by Wilson. Gentry back in the game. Inside to Griffin, peeks over his shoulder, sends it outside for a three, Mickle. Short. Nice hustle by Dylan Griffin. Faces the basket, takes the three. Bang! Boy, what a high arcing shot. We had the angle, didn't we? Beautiful. What a game he's had. What an impressive uh, all-around player Griffin is. Of course, you got to see him a lot at TA. He had a good supporting cast. The contact down there, no good. As Birmingham, uh, or Harry Bates missed. Mickle quickly in the front court. Mickle takes it all the way and loses it. Patrick McKinney back in for Farmington. I like the way Harry Bates is uh, taking the challenge of Griffin inside, and, and, and he's challenged him the last two times on the floor. He'll won. Let's we'll see what this uh, play is. Let's get a stop here. Outside to Hathaway. Pollock. Bates has it blocked by Griffin. Let's do, let's do. Dylan Griffin getting on that stat sheet in multiple ways, isn't he? Three-pointer, no good by Reynolds, and the rebound is good, and the UMF bench is excited. They should be Reynolds' good hustle play here. Everybody appreciates a hustle play. It's Brock Flag that got the basket. He's going for the, the three-point play. So watch Flag in underneath. They're going to follow up, stays with it, goes up, draws the harm, gets it to lip home. That one, no good. Rebound UMF. Hustled by Jason Reynolds, gives him another possession. McKenney on the drive. Griffin swings it to the far corner, coming out of the corner, and now he's skipping across the lane. Chadbourne tees one up, rattles off. Nice rebound inside, Josh Gentry. The extra pass to Chadbourne, the three-point shooter, just missed that one, but... Good rotation that time by UMF. Farwell to Bates. They go inside to Gentry. Has to fight his way clear. Overshoots. Rebound Chadbourne. That's three. That's three stops. Keep going. Bring the ball up. Patrick McKinney. Griffin sets a screen. Griffin got a back for three. That time no good. Rebound right to Hathaway. Caldwell in and out on a three. Rebound by Brock Flagg, and he was fouled. That's going to be a one and one for Farmington. Yeah, Boston Caldwell a little frustrated there on the miss and came up, tried to make up for it as players often uh, will do and end up with the foul. Good work. 
Jackson Birmingham replacing Harry Bates for the Mustangs. At the line, Brock Flag. And whose ball? They're going to stay there, I think. No? It's going to be a white ball with seven and a half to go. Will Harriman going to go back in along with Ethan Forrester? Birmingham brings it across. Hathaway near his own bench. Gentry sets the screen. Hathaway gives up his dribble, has to go back outside. Malik Foster back in number four. There's a drive by Birmingham. Up and under is good for Jackson Birmingham. Sixty-one to fifty. Farmington with the lead with seven minutes to go. Second half. Little dipsy do layup is good. That was Will Harriman with a nice move. Birmingham being watched closely. Foster rotates it around to Hathaway. Pollock rattles off. Gentry had a part of it and out of bounds off CM. Here's the Birmingham finish here. Going to use the reverse layup technique here. Watch him take it baseline. Goes underneath. Uses the basket. Keep the defender away from him. And good tough finish. CM hasn't had that many really easy looks. No. Everything's been a challenge. I mean, we've seen them move the ball. And, you know, Hathaway or Caldwell had a little daylight a lot of times. It was another steal. Mickle ahead of the pack over the front rim and good. Zach Mickle. Again, the product of Balrica, Massachusetts. He went to Shaw Scene Regional. Up in the Merrimack Valley. Mount Merrimack Valley League. Birmingham directs some traffic. Underneath Gentry, play a control foul. So I want to thank everybody for watching tonight. Everybody staying good and positive on online, which I we really respect and like. You know, uh, Bonnie Chad Bourne, is she related to you, Jim? No. Well, she said great announcing, so I figured she must have been <laughs> related to you. <laughs> We're all related, Rob. You know that. <laughs> and there's going to be a hold on Foster. No, <laughs> it's the other way. Zach Mickle. Says he's not giving up the ball. That was an interesting call. Malik he, Foster's smiling. I think he called over. Did he? I think he called the carry. Okay. Uh, that was. Uh... No, people who are new to us, new fans. Rob and I met 10 years ago doing Thornton Academy football, both retired educators. And I think you agree with this, Rob. We take things serious, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. Exactly, yeah. And, and give credit to the kids. Yeah. Stay positive. We're not, you know, we're not like uh, expecting uh, these kids to be million dollar players. I'll tell you, I see the effort both in high school and college. And then we watch a pro sport and say, why can't a baseball player run all the way through? Yeah. Or why doesn't somebody go for a loose ball? So. Going to the line will be Harry Bates. And again, we apologize for not having the live stats. Probably by tomorrow, they'll take the scorebook, and then you'll see a box score under today's game in the schedule. Yeah, it's, you know, Farmington's kind of looking at this as an exhibition game, but. Uh... Nicely done, Harry Bates. CM went all out with their stuff, and part of it is to, is to work some new pe people into some of the roles and the support roles, Jim, that you need here. Foster ahead of the pack, over the rim, and it went in for Rocco Chang. 
defied gravity. I think Sir Isaac Newton tipped it in for the, and the gravity theory made it go down. Well, you saw Rocco in the first half come in, had some instant impact on the game. And one of the things when you see Rocco, he can fly. I'm gonna, we're gonna wind this back a ways because we can see the steal and then it gets, you know, a nice pass ahead by Malik Foster. Watch it right here. Malik with the good pass and Rocco on the take just flies by everybody, lays it up and drips it home. Let you know we'll be here for every single home game for the Mustangs this winter season. In fact, we've already started. We've been here for one men's basketball game against Lee Academy. And uh, we also uh, did the uh, couple of hockey games already this year from Norway Savings Bank Arena. Greg Glenn and myself will be on the call for those games all winter. Jim will be here for almost all the basketball. There's a few games Jim can't make due to commitments. And uh, Nate Munzing will join me on those. And Nate and I will do those as well. And when the um, Mustangs head up to uh, the Augusta Civic Center to play the moose. We'll be up there for that game. That'll be a moose call for us. But that always happens very early in the season. Check your your uh, lineup for this. And always go back in and check in the uh, with the uh, online page uh, for the Mustangs because uh, ros rosters and everything's right up there and you can download those and have those at home uh, for yourself. So lots of great stuff up on there. Some familiar names that for the men on University of Maine Augusta. Their roster is up. You, you'll recognize names, and uh, they'll be very competitive. And Southern Maine has some returners, but they also have some new players with yeah. with some height, I noticed. And uh, don't forget what Great Bay Community College in the YSCC last year with, yep. with their run in the tournament. Uh, so it's going to be some uh, exciting play, YSCC. And games like this against opponents like this really make it better. Stumbling through the lane was Griffin. Farmington got the rebound. And they hung with it. I think that was Will Harriman. Again, I'm dodging, uh, looking around coaches. We never tell them to don't, you know, stay out of our way because they're coaching. But right. Yeah. Coach Harris of New Hampshire Tech's my favorite because he stands at the other end of the bench. Yeah. So we'll see if we. Last year we got a little bit of a boost there. They put a little platform up here and. 427 to go. They should do is build us a little press box across the way. Yeah. Right? With the end of the brick <laughs> up there, the Munsing Media Pavilion, we'll call it. Get naming rights for that. Chadbourne brings it up. Hands off to Mickle right in front of his coach. Sam Leal doing some coaching. Farmington graduate. There's a drive up and in, nicely done for Will Harriman. Well, that ball just kind of popped to Will, and he said, whoa, nobody here. The Bitterford Tigers. They always say Tiger pride down there in Bitterford. Again, I'm a Farmington graduate, so I, I always have a couple of lines. You've heard them, but sometimes I'll say, you know those uh, buildings named after people on campus? I'll go, uh, they were alive when I was there. <laughs> they were your professors. Yep. <laughs> but a lot of teachers and principals uh, came from the they, ranks, especially back in those days absolutely. from the University of Maine Farmington. A lot, of, a lot of them coach. There's a coaching uh, exactly. tree. Yeah, all the social studies teachers. Yeah. You know what their first name is, Jim? That was missed by Foster. Coach. Yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> That's one thing. If you're a coach, same as you. They'll be respectful. They'll say, Coach. Three pointer Chadbourne hits the back rim. And hustling in there was Foster to cut it off because it was going right back to a Beaver, it looked like for a second. Underneath, fake Bates tries to create. He's going to the line. Dylan Griffin was down there playing defense. Yeah, Griff trying to talk his way into a non foul. Well, this has been really good for for uh, Harry Bates to have to match up here against a good athletic big man. It's going to make him a better player, that's for sure. And it's been a good challenge. And Harry hasn't backed off at all. It's always fun when we see teams early on. 
to check with them throughout the season. Yeah. You know, did they play the same? Are they playing the same? Have they changed their lineup? Because you know, th things happen over the course of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I like these Farmington uh, kids. Uh, Coach is well, really doing a great job yep. with them, and I like the way they play. I like the way they respect the game, and no belly aching out. I mean, nobody's belly aching on calls, and really good, really good stuff. And again, the intangibles, uh, the way they uh, greet teammates coming off the floor or cheer when they make a basket, even though, you know, of course we know CM has always done that as well. Yeah, but all, all teams don't. One of the things that's going to play into the advantage for the Mustangs this year, Jim, is going to be their depth. We know we're looking at the YSCC how a lot of teams, you know, they might, you know, they might have nine, ten, right? And uh, they're going to face a deep lineup here, and the Mustangs are going to try to run people into the floor, I think, a little bit uh, this year if they can and keep coming after them in waves. And I, I suspect that will be part of the strategy that Dave and the coaching staff are going to employ here. Zach Mickle, two for two that trip. Simon Chadbor came out. He had a very good game. He's going to be a he did. long distance shooter for the Beavers. 71 55, Farmington. He's pretty much led the whole way. CM had to lead a couple of times. It was only a one point lead at the half by yeah, Farmington. 37 36 at the half. Yeah. And a big slam! Who was that? Was that Jordan Anthony? I'm, I was screened on that one again. A big slam to make it 73-55. Yeah, it was Jordan Anthony, 25. Wow. Rebounded. There's a shot in and out by Bates. Jordan Anthony from Farmington, Connecticut. Farmington High School in Connecticut. Mickel on the drive. Brock Flagg gives up his dribble. Goes outside. There's a spinning move. Deflected. Excellent defense. That was uh, Zach Poison of the Mustangs making a great play. Underneath. There's a slam the other way. Harry Bates on an assist for Jackson Birmingham. We get a timeout on the court, Rob Munzing. Well, we want to let you know Friday night, 7 o'clock uh, tip-off here. We'll see the ladies in action for the very first time. And then uh, for you Mustang fans, Saturday, the YSCC soccer tournament moved from last weekend uh, to this weekend. We'll have games on Saturday at 11 and 2. The Mustangs play at 2. Now, we want to give uh, the fans that have been used to watching those games on Munzing Media for soccer all season long, those games are going to be on the YSCC network. And that's that's where games go. Uh, we had a similar circumstance last year, Jim, when we did the tournament basketball games here. They go out to the YSCC network, and there is a fee for that. So you can check that out on the YSCC network. Uh, dot com find out all about they have a tournament pass for both days uh, or a single day pass that uh, you can purchase to watch the games from Saturday and also Saturday we have you uh, uh, UMA will be in here at one o'clock using the Central Maine Community College Kirk Hall gymnasium in a women's matchup and a women's matchup Jim will be here for the call that Andy Munson will be here and uh, if you know a camera person would like to make some money uh, have them contact me, Rob, at MunzingMedia.com. We're looking for a camera operator. It's just so much going on. All the all the kids that work for us usually are working for NFHS, or they're working uh, uh, for WHOU, and all the teams that do all the high school sports. There's so much high school action this weekend, it's hard to find anybody. So we're looking for a camera operator uh, for Saturday. You can't cheer and get too excited, though, because the camera would be moving. So <laughs> you got to be sort of stoic. Nice catch down there by Ethan Forrester. Well, we got the best camera people in the business, and Andrew Sevenson here tonight, and very he'll, he'll be with us all weekend. <laughs> and that's a hold on Hathaway right in front of us. Yeah. Offensive holding, 10 yards. Zach Mickle back at the line. So the women were playing away. I haven't got any updates on that score. No, no live stats or anything. I don't think going on. So that'll all come on uh, online, and that's one of the reasons we have these exhibition games. And we, and one of the things we do is we do them up. 
uh, just like regular season games, so everyone can get a little practice, and we got some new people working. Hathaway for three. Bang! Wyatt Hathaway, deep right corner. There's a steal. Hath, no, oh, that's Birmingham tries to go inside. Stolen away. Yeah, they're looking for, uh, looking for Bates on the inside feed, and Bates was unsure. He'd already started to head back, I think, a little bit on defense, so that didn't connect. Now, this looking at the men's schedule, so I thought they were going to be away for a number of games. They're listing a main maritime game Wednesday the 8th. I, th I thought in my schedule it said it was away. I'm looking at a, you know, the uh, brochure. Yeah, we'll certainly want to look at that because if it's here, we'll be doing it. Yeah, see online, What's it, it says saying? at. At, so that might be a, we'll double check that, Jim. That might be a mistake on the, on the uh, paper product. But there is a reason that you always got to check because sometimes things change. Right. So Mickel doing a nice job at the foul line. And down the other end, we have contact. These teams are playing it right to the end, aren't they? Braden St. Pierre. 24 in the game for Farmington. At the line, Jackson Birmingham. Ethan, middle of the court. Right down the middle. I'm sure the uh, all the new players are glad to get you know, something closer to a real game. I know they did Bridgeton and that type of a thing. But. Yeah, this has been played like a real game. It's really going to benefit uh, both teams. And that was sort of an intentional foul. Yeah, well, you, yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking what you do maybe, Jim, is you're, you're just practicing your end of game situation if you have to do this in the regular season games. You know, practice it uh, so you're not, you know, if you have a, you might have a call from the bench for that type of thing that you want to practice, so you make the call and make sure it gets executed. Cole Banks going to check in. He's at the table. And Zach Mickle might have his footprints on the foul line. Yeah, we've, we've seen Zach in here a lot. Yes. For his years at Southern Maine and his brother. Bring the ball up is Birmingham. And a holding foul. Yeah, Birmingham's been playing aggressively all night, hasn't he, Jim? And he's had a good, good game here. We won't have any end of the game final stats to bring you, but we will let you know that Jackson Birmingham will be our edge nutrition play of the game. Good spirited effort from Jackson. Had some good finishes as well. He's going to have a terrific season here for the Mustangs. Soft touch on that one. Well, again, you know, you and I, both educators, again, we look at the educational component. And we see players literally coming all over from the world. I say their parents have to trust their student athlete. Mm -hmm. They have to trust the staff here, the you know, teaching staff and the coaching staff, you know, with day-to-day -day stuff as well. And uh, I think, uh, you know, Central Maine gets very good ranks in those things. Well, I think that's one of the reasons that Dave put together the uh, press conference to get the kids in front of the camera uh, so their families at home could see them. We get a lot of nice compliments on it. If you haven't seen that, it's still up on, on the uh, CM Athletics uh, Facebook page where we direct you to everything... Uh, that we stream. We also stream to other places. And, you know, if you have a big screen TV at home and you have a streaming device, you can download the BoxCast app, search for Munzing Media in there, and watch it on your big screen TV. Brock Flagg made some foul shots. Ball bouncing around. On the run out, going all the way. Score the basket for Braden St. Pierre. Bombing to Bedge, up and clapping with one minute left in this game. 
probably time for me to do my, I think about every year I put up a little tutorial on how to do that, because a lot of people don't know you can do that. And, you know, you can sit in your lounge chair and, you know, if you're down in Australia, watch it on your big screen TV live. Number 20, Mason Jardins again from Jackman. Nice pass by Jardins. <coughs> Excuse me. Get it to Braden St. Pierre for the layup. That was from really downtown. That was missed by Poison. And Mason Jardins is going to go to the foul line for two. They had some snow up in the. Uh, Jackman Greenville area. Yeah, I saw some pictures of that. Yep. Uh, keep it right up there. Of course, the hunters like that, Jim. They like yes. to uh, help them track. The only thing I hunt is what's the best game to watch on uh, TV, so. Yeah, well, being from <laughs> Massachusetts, we, you, you know, I'm from the North Shore, and, you know, we didn't really do any hunting. I, Never grew up with that culture, no, but I respect it. And yes. I used to have uh, extra credit for any kids that uh, brought Mr. Munzing in deer steak. I would give him <laughs> a A on a project. And it's going to go back the other way to UMF with 32 seconds to go. Yeah, I got a little ragged here at the end, but uh, it, it was uh, pretty, pretty much decided by that point. And, Ball comes in to Forrester. He's going to shoot two. Ethan Forrester again from Colorado. Well, we certainly want to wish the Beavers the very best of luck in the NAC this year, and we'll be following them. Yeah. Be able to check them out. I'm sure they stream their games. From downtown, in and out by Hathaway, and no basket. Putting it up was Harry Bates. And I think they're going to say one and one. I see Chantel's watching from the women's team. Chantel, let us know how you did tonight. Front rim. She was a welcome addition oh, uh, boy, second yeah. semester last yeah. year to the, the team. Yeah. I saw her play when she was at Thomas. Uh, they played the uh, played UMA, and uh, I was impressed with her. And then next thing, she's down here running around Kirk Hall. And over half, no shot. David Gatsby in for the first time, number 11 for Farmington, sophomore. From Blue Hill, Maine, George Stevens Academy. And that's going to do it. Again, a very competitive game. Both coaches found out a lot of things, maybe, and uh, they'll use that information going forward. So the University of Maine, Farmington, 83, Central Maine, a 64. So we appreciate everybody watching and listening. Stay tuned to Munzing Media. Women's game. Uh, Again, Friday, UMA will be featured here on Saturday. And it looks like it's going to be a great season, Rob. And uh, thanks to our cameraman, Andrew Severson. Welcome to Assistant Athletic Director, Quincy Perry. And Rob, we're back in action again. The old guy's back at it another year. So we're, we're very pleased to always come here down to Kirk Hall. And uh, it's really a, a pretty good uh, the women, uh, let's see, it's 47-12 after one. So uh, they must be, Chantel must be watching <laughs> at, at halftime. I, I won't tell coach. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, Again, thanks for watching wherever you may be around the world. Everybody take care of themselves. Think the good thoughts and join us again on future coverage here as the University of Maine Farmington defeats Central Maine. And so until the next time on Munzing Media, take care, everybody.
as always, put the front of the net. All those little things to make you what you are. Jim, I think what you think, Jim. Okay, let's go. Yeah, we, we're strong on family here. Like, I look at all these, all my teammates as my brothers. And that's how we carry ourselves on and off the court. You heard about free college? It's free. It's free. It's free. Recent high school graduates from the classes of 2020, 21, 22, and 23 can attend CMCC for free. The free college scholarship pays two years of tuition and mandatory fees. No income or age limits. What are you waiting for? It's free! Leaving CM with no debt is going to set me up for my future. Visit cmcc.edu slash free for details. We'll save that for between innings. One out here. Is that pitch driven to left, and that one's going to be a track meet as the left fielder Wilcox will track that one down. Ducharme scores. McWinney scores. Hooker rounds third, and he will score. That'll go in as a three-run homer for Keith Hooker.